Hey, it's great to have you here today. I was actually just practicing a little bit and took out my phone, and I'm gonna show you the drill that took me from shooting in the 90s to the 70s in uh, basically about a year. So I did something very similar to this. This is the brand new Heathrow Country Club wedge range. This is my home course. And if you look out here, they put in these concrete pads ranging from 30 yards all the way out to 100 yards. They're four feet, in di four feet in diameter. And the goal is to bounce a ball off each one of those pads and see how many times it takes you to do it. Now it is hard as all get out. And when I did this, I mowed a strip in my backyard. I grew up on a farm, I mowed a strip. My backyard was about 60, 70 yards. We had a 60 inch mower. I mowed one strip as low as it would go. My parents did not like this. <laughs> and then I set up towels every 10 yards and tried to land it on those towels. And when I did that, my consistency went through the roof, not only for wedges, that was great. But my driver consistency went through the roof. My iron consistency went through the roof. So we're gonna talk about some of the basics of this. And then we're also gonna answer, how in the heck do the pros spin the heck out of these wedge shots? So you see them hit this 60 and 70 yard shots. They're landing on the green, almost backing up. How are they doing that? Is there a technique that they're doing that is different than what recreational players are doing? And there absolutely is, I'm gonna share that with you. And then I'm also gonna answer the number one question, how would I keep from chunking it if I'm doing that technique? So that's kind of the question that I get after I start to talk about what that technique is. And then I'm gonna give you my number one fundamental on what I think the most important thing is to get these wedges to be accurate. So piece number one, let's talk about how do we spin it. And if you're trying to spin a wedge, what most recreational players are doing, I have a 56 degree, either want to use a 56 or a 60, really any of the other clubs just aren't going to work. But what most players are doing is they're releasing the club, their shaft is almost straight up and down, and it actually creates too much loft on the face. So what happens is once you get too much loft, two things kill your spin. Number one, the ball starts to slide up the face instead of grabbing on the face, coming out low with a lot of spin. If you're doing this correctly, it's gonna be a low shot that really grabs. It's gonna be much lower than what you're used to seeing uh, most of your shots probably most likely if, if you're a recreational player or what your playing partners are doing. It's gonna seem very low, almost what you might see is like a thin shot, but it's not gonna be thin, it's gonna be solid. So we gotta take loft off. And then number two, if we add loft to it, let's say that we happen to catch one perfectly clean and it does get some good spin on it. Well, it has what's called spin degradation. So as it goes up higher in the air, the spin starts to fall off the ball and with time it lands, it doesn't have nearly as much spin on there. So what the pros are doing, most of them are using either a 56 or 60 and they're leaning the shaft forward to where at impact, they're delivering the club with only about 45 degrees of loft or so. Anywhere from that 40 to 46, 47 degrees of loft range is perfect. So if I have a 56 degree wedge here, that means I need to lean it at least 10 or 11 degrees forward. I like to tell people to get between that 40 and 45. So 10 to 15 degrees forward with the wedge. That's what the pros are doing different with their technique. Now when you do that, the cool thing is that it gets your hands in front and makes it very easy to keep the face really consistent. So if I hit this wedge shot here, again, I'm gonna lean it forward 10, 15 degrees. That ball only felt like to me it went say 20 feet in the air. I know it went a little bit higher than that, but it came out very low. And you can almost hear the ball spinning a little bit. You can kind of see it wanting to grab when it hits the ground. So that's the technique. Now, what do I need to do to get this technique right? Well, number one, I need to get my weight to my left side. If my weight is on my back foot, my upper body is kind of falling back here. My right shoulder is way behind the golf ball almost impossible. So if I lean my hands as far forward as I can, the shaft's still straight up and down. I've got to get my weight centered over my left foot. When you look at the pros doing this, if I was to drop a club down from my left shoulder at impact, it's going to be in front of the golf ball significantly. And that allows me now to hit this shot, get the shaft lean, get that ball coming out low with some good spin on it. Now this technique is only, it only works when you're about 50 yards or farther out. Once you start to get 40, 30, 20 yards away from the green, that will be hit solidly. It will have a decent amount of spin, 
but there's not going to be enough spin with that slow of a swing speed to really get it to grab and spin back on the green. You're going to have to start to use land angle or a higher lofted shot to get it to stop quickly. So really think of this shot as anything from 50 yards all the way out to full swings with your irons. You've got to be leaning that thing forward. Uh, so even with a middle iron, that club shaft is going to be leaning forward about 30% of the natural loft. So if I have a 56 degree wedge, I'm leaning at 30% of that. A little over 15 degrees, I'm leaning it all the way down to 40. If I have a six iron that's, that's uh, 30 degrees, 30% 30 of that is 10, I'm leaning it all the way down to 20. So your six iron still has 10 degrees of shaft lean. Your sand wedge has 15. Your lob wedge has a little more than that. That's what's gonna get you the compression. That's what's gonna get you to hit it solid. That's what the difference in technique that the pros are doing. Now, the common question I get after that is, well, that's great, Clay. I'd love to get it leaning forward, but how in the heck do I keep from hitting just so far down into the ground if I'm doing that? So if I get my weight to my left, I get the shaft leaning forward. Well, wouldn't I just bury this club into the ground like I'm smacking into the mat? It's not actually what's happening. See, I can get a lot of shaft lean. I'm aim a little farther to the right here this time. I can get a ton of shaft lean. Let's get 20 degrees of shaft lean. And from there, I'm just gonna brush the turf. Right, so I can have a lot of shaft lean because my hands are actually moving back up and in or I'm rotating my body around. So as I'm rotating my body, my hands move, or move back up to keep the shaft lean from digging. So it's not like my hands are moving down into the ground and stubbing this into the turf. That's gonna be chunks and thins and all kinds of inconsistent contact. It's saying we have to take the hands in front to stabilize the face. We have to do that to get the divot in front. But from there, I can really be pretty thin, pretty shallow if I wanted to. So let's exaggerate here again, way in front, right? Nice, clean divot. What would be a clean divot? That ball wasn't digging, I wasn't slamming into the turf at all. So that's the biggest question I get, and it really comes down to rotation. So as your hands are in front, as my body keeps on rotating, you can see that that moves the club level with the ground, right? If I stop my body from rotating, let's say I keep my hips square, I keep my shoulders square, and I try to throw my hands in front, well, now I'm gonna have to dig. So it's really about rotating through the shot to be able to lean the shaft forward and still get that nice, thin, kind of level with the ground angle of attack. You're gonna be down, you're gonna be hitting a little bit of a divot. It's not gonna be anything crazy, right? But that's, I'm exaggerating there. Those are coming out super low but I'm just showing you that I don't have to slam it in the ground just because I have the shaft lean. Now, the biggest piece here, I think, that ties in with what we just talked about and makes this really, really easy is gonna be the tempo. If you're rushing your downswing, if you're feeling like you're quick from the top, this is gonna be a big deal here. Not only is it gonna help with your wedges, it's gonna help with every single club in your bag. What I wanna do, and what I realize after working on this a lot, I had a heck of a tough time hitting these targets when I was rushing from the top or I started down with my hands and arms. I felt like, and when I watch players like Ernie Els, and I'll go ahead and get this camera angle a little more perpendicular to the target here. So I'm gonna go a little bit more that way. So it'll be perpendicular to the way I'm hitting. You'll be able to see this a little bit easier. but. I felt like I got my hands to the end of the backswing. They stayed there, almost hovered there. Then I got my weight to shift to the left. My weight got on my front foot, and then I swung down. And I noticed when I watched players like Ernie Els that were so smooth, that's what it looked like he did. Into the backswing, it's almost like the hands float here for a little bit. The club head doesn't move. Then the weight shift happens. Then we're coming in our downswing. So if I do that here, it really feels easy to be consistent because my hands are really soft, the club is smooth in transition until I get my weight on my front foot. Once I get my weight on my front foot, then I can just rotate all the way through into a good full finish here. Let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, felt pretty nice there. Felt pretty smooth in my transition, I almost hit the pad. These things are a pain in the butt to hit, I tell you. You talk about aggravating, I was out here for 
about an hour and a half and got through half of them. It took me 224 shots at all of these targets. These are tough. These are only four foot in diameter. Mike Bender has some that are four foot square, so about 20, 25% larger. And, uh, you know, I could get those around 100 shots, 125 shots. These are significantly tougher. So if you can hit these four foot diameter targets, you're really doing well. There we go. And it almost feels like, again, I'm here. My hands are, it feels like inside my body. My hands are stopping. My weight gets left. Then I come through. So you really want to feel like, if you want to have a smooth swing, you want to feel like you're not jerking from the top at all. It's all about getting that weight shift as your hands aren't really moving or it feels like they're not moving. So my hands are hovering as it's going weight shift. If I try to get that weight shift as my hands are starting down, it's too late. You're going to be fairly jerky with it. Let's give it one more. There you go. That one felt nice too. So I'll show you how tough this is. I've hit a few decent shots there. And if I zoom in on this, I think this is the 60 yard target you can see balls all around it but i didn't hit any of them so this is really good practice i highly recommend if you're a, a member at heathrow i don't think there's anything that could be better for your game than coming out here and practicing on your wedges and if you want to set this up at your own course it's very inexpensive you can talk your your facility into doing it you know just pouring some concrete pads you can set some molds out there i mean you're not talking about much money to make this happen and it's probably one of the best practice stations that I've ever seen. So hope you enjoyed this video. There's one thing I didn't talk about here that makes this very important. If it's, it's extremely important to make any of this work. If my club shaft is steep in the transition, I'm going to really be burying that club into the ground, having to reroute it, stand up out of my posture, all these things that I don't want to have happen. If I want to be able to stay in my posture and maintain it all the way through impact and not have to pop up out of it, I'm going to have to get that club shallowed out <clears throat> and swinging on playing. Now, let me show you exactly what that is. A lot of times, players aren't familiar with what on plane is. I think they have to do this giant shallowing move to make that happen. I'm going to show you what the perfect shallowing amount looks like. And the cool thing about this, when you draw the shallowing line the way I'm going to show you, you can do it all the way from a sand wedge to a driver. Every single club, you draw the line on there, just like I'm saying. And when you hit this single checkpoint, you're going to be right there where you can play the most consistent golf. So check it out. Make sure you click the card here on the end of the screen to watch that video. I can't wait to show you.